Good morning. Um, my name is Guilherme Lavoca, and today I will be presenting this project that is open at audit. And I work for RNP, is the Rede Nacional de Ensino e Pesquisa. It's the Brazilian and RAIN. Um, I work at the Natural Operations team, and we are in Brazil on all states. We have 27 POPs, around 1,500 customers, and mainly universities and research institutes. Um, we have our own infrastructure, uh, but also we contract carriers. So our backbone is connected throughout the, the country, and we have uh, high capacity circuits uh, in Cyber Brazil and to, to international connections also, to commercial and another and NRANs like uh, GIA, Internet2, and Rede Clara. So uh, this, with this scenario, we have some challenges there because we have a big network and we have uh, many, many manufacturers uh, providing network devices, so we have this, this kind of situation. And we have a high density of devices on POPs. They are managed locally by the, the local team, so this is another challenge. Um, and different support to automation technologies like NetConf, RESTConf, Yang, open config, so we have uh, older equipments and newer equipments that have different support to these technologies. So it's a challenge in terms of automation also. And by default, the vendors have gaps in terms of security um, with the, the basic configuration. So to address this problem, we needed uh, to implement a technique that would be flexible enough, uh, fast, and in, in, a, in an automation way. So uh, the impact of this in, in the operations team is considerable when we, you have routers and switches uh, vulnerable to the internet. Um, the, the, the routers have a considerable processing power. Um, some of them run Linux or BSD, and they can be targets of DDoS, botnets, and DNS poisoning. So when you have them unprotected with ports open to the internet, you can have customers affected when you have uh, routers crashing by many uh, DDoS or uh, authentication failures, and so if an attacker gain access to this device, it can make a lot of damage, like creating a man in the middle topology, uh, mirror traffic to eavesdrop, and so on. So this is a concern that needs to be taken care. So with this project, we, we try to address these problems. So as I said, we have a lot of equipments to, to deal with. So we needed uh, an automated way to, to check and supporting multiple vendors uh, and have a follow-up in terms of inconsistencies and vulnerabilities, providing reports so the, the higher uh, level teams can uh, follow up the, the actions taken to, to mitigate the vulnerabilities. And we needed to, to standardize the configurations. So we have a, a baseline spread throughout the network. And with this, we would improve the network security as a whole, ensuring these best practices are applied to the network. 
So a brief story here. Uh, in 2019, we started uh, very small with one pop and a range of, of, of equipments. Uh, we developed an MVP. And with this MVP, uh, we could uh, automate the tasks, but it had some limitations. And we identified many uh, improvements necessary to, to take off with this, this project. So we write a roadmap and submitted to the Programma Frida from LACNIC and it was accepted and we started developing in 2020 and released the version one in 2021. So this team, uh, uh, the, the, this, this project was developed in the network operations team. Uh, me and Thiago Sequeira, I was the leader of the project and was at the back end and Thiago was with the front end and we had support of the corporate system team, the incidents team, and the local teams at the pubs. So a little bit of, about the architecture, we use a lot of Python in this project. So we use uh, the Django framework, uh, a lot of scripts uh, to parse the configurations and facts from the, the, the routers and switches. We use it some open uh, libraries like Nornir, Napalm, Netmuco. Nornir was a uh, big, uh, big uh, improvement because we could collect uh, information from devices in parallel. So the performance of the system is, is improved with this parallel uh, work. And all the communication between the system and the devices are encrypted via SSHv2. So it's encapsulated in a Docker container, so it's independent from operating system. We have uh, GUI and Django web server, a database, some Python code to parse and in, uh, make the interpretation and the assessment of the configuration and device facts, generating reports. So um, the MVP was very simple. We only support uh, the Juniper and Xtreme vendors. Uh, we had checks based on an internal guide of best practice, but these checks were hard coded to the core of the system. And we had a minimal web interface, a simple database, and uh, simple reports with results saved in CSV files. It worked for a while in a small scope, uh, but we needed to, to improve it. So this is the main page of the MVP. Uh, this one is uh, the audit page. And a CSV with all the results. It worked for us um, because we needed a consolidated report to, to manage many, many configuration aspects from many devices, um, but it needed more improvements. So in the roadmap, we refactored the system from the ground, basically. Uh, receiving feedbacks from the users that were using the, the system and we rebuilt it uh, and we implemented in a hierarchical organization uh, so users can have different permissions inside the system. Um, one device is attached to a site and a site is attached to a group and this group is associated with uh, a user and the audit core uh, was improved in terms of uh, performance. We implemented custom checks. We ex extracted the, the checks from the core of the system to, to another structure. So we have test severity uh, included. 
uh, we could add more more rules to one test. So it, uh, it, now it is m much more flexible to to have uh, tests, and we added support to Cisco, Huawei, and Mikrotik, saving the results in JSON. Uh, reports in web views and uh, tracking mechanism for, for vulnerabilities. So this is a simple example of uh, one test that is checking basically if Telnet is enabled in a Juniper uh, router. So the, the top uh, image we have the test so it, it calls the, the rule telnet check. Uh, we can have multiple rules, but this one is a simple example. So uh, it has some, some parameters like logic, uh, severity. The severity is calculated uh, using a NIST calculator. That is an international standard. Uh, it has a message OK if telnet is disabled or a message not OK and the solution. So when, when I present the, the system, you will see. Uh, and the bottom image it is the specific check in the, in the configuration of the router. So it will search for this string, set system services, telnet, and it has to be in the same line. There is a logic end, but there is just one string. Uh, this string has not to be present, so it's not desirable to, to have this string applied to the router, and it is an exact match. So with this structure, uh, we, ha we gained a lot of flexibility to build new rules, so users can create their own rules to address specific problems in their networks, and there is a, the database from the system that are some global recommendations. So this is the home page of the system. Uh, we have some general information here. Uh, site info with the number of hosts. Uh, we have the host without issues, host with issues, and the number of issues encountered. Uh, we have the to a top five uh, devices with more vulnerabilities, a link to the documentation, um, a graph with issues in time, and another pie chart here with the issues classified with severity. So this is a page with the inventory of the system. You will register all your devices uh, to, to do an audit. So it will have the name of the, devi the device, the, the description, a type, there is the vendor, and the IP, and SSH port. Uh, this is an example of a device report. We have uh, a summary info of the device at the left. Um, the last audit date, if it was successful, the number of issues encountered, uh, if the recommended OS uh, is applied to, this, to the router. And at the right, we have the, the last audit with each line is a, is a specific test. So it has uh, a value if it is OK or not OK, and a description of what it is. And there is another chart of the vulnerability by severity. So this is a result page of an audit. Uh, in this case, we have just one router being audited, but it, it works in two stages, basically. It will check if the recommended OS is applied. The system does not uh, recommend any OS because it's uh, a very specific test from each, um, each network, so you need to to have this in a database, so it will compare if the running OS is in accordance with the with this database. There is managed inside the admin tab, and after that, the system will 
get the, the config file of the router or the switch and we'll check each each test and we will run uh, if it is okay or not okay and you have the solution to the problem inside this this report so the next steps uh, we, we are using this system uh, in RMP and it's working fine. We have a lot of progress in terms of security. Uh, now the, the, the project is open to the community, so uh, I, we would appreciate to have new adopters, receive feedback, and improve the system with new features and new best practice base like um, you, you will you will use and can recommend another another test or another rule to to be added to the system, and we can add it to the to the core. So uh, this is the the git of this where you can download the code and, and install it and and. There is a, a web page with the com documentation, with the instructions of how you can install it and, and use it. And this is my, my email if you have any, any doubts or any suggestions. So, gracias uh, if you have any questions. Thank you, Guillerme. We'll now go to the Q&A section. I'd like to invite Jorge Villa, who is part of the program committee of the of LACNIC's technical forum, so he can assist us with the questions in Zoom and also here in the room. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation, Guillerme. I would like to know whether people here in the room have any questions for Guillerme. Take advantage that we have great speakers today. They don't come here every day, and the ones we have today are very important. We have a question over there. So please introduce yourself. I'm Pedro from the Federal University of Paraná. Which are the tests that failed most? The most frequent ones. A huge problem, uh, but we have, uh, as we have many vendors, um, we have a, a variety of issues, and but because as people think differently when they are uh, designing templates to apply to to the routers and switches, we see different things. Uh, some people care more about NTP. There is a, a problem and forget to, to disable telnet or disable web uh, admin. So people think differently when they are designing their templates. So the goal of this uh, project is to have this baseline and to not uh, forget anything in, in the network because it's, it's, a, it's a problem. Okay, muchas gracias. Tenemos. Thank you very much. There's another question here in the room, and I think there's a remote question. So let's start with a question here in the room and then with a remote question. Good morning. I'm Jose Cardenas from Peru. I have a question. How do you update the app, or how are you planning to update the app of new devices that might be produced by the vendors 
for example, in the event of new services that might be included in these devices, and it might be necessary to review whether or not these should be enabled. How do you update the vendor's box in the app? Not uh, make any configuration in the, it just in the devices. It just points out what the, the vulnerabilities are and recommend command lines to, to be applied to the, to the box. And with that, uh, it will be secure. Uh, so it gathers facts from the device and points out what the problems are, but it does not uh, fix anything. So you need to, to do this with your automation tools like many, many admins, many network operators already use Ansible and other, other software. So we didn't uh, take this approach to, to fix the problems with the system as we will be rebuilding the, the wheel. So, um, I, it's okay? Okay. Tenemos uh, una... We have a question in the chat from Hugo Salgado from Chile. The question is as follows. Is it possible to use this tool from outside a network? From what I see, this has been considered for the internal administrators, indicating an inventory of the devices that have to be checked. But it would be also interesting to use this as an external public scan scanning for reasons of security. You can use it externally, but you need to have uh, SSH uh, access from, from the external point to the internal network. So the communication between the system and the routers and switches are made in, via SSH. So you need to have this, this connection to, to the system, be able to collect the information. Thank you very much. Any more questions for Guillerme? Please take advantage that we have top-level speakers with us today. Thank you. Okay. Gracias.